All right, good morning, everybody. I'd like to call the County Board of Supervisors to order on Tuesday, December 27th, at approximately 10, 10, or 10, 12 a.m. Hope Santa was good to everybody. What? Like to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. <coughs> of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. No, I just seen everybody's watching. <laughs> so we have 19 present. Presentation of the agenda. So moved. There a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Correspondence. Other than the unassigned fund balance sheet. Anybody have any questions on that? Bless you. Bless you. Public comment. Does anybody in the public have a comment they would like to make? No supervisor response. Administrator's monthly report. Sure, I just wanted to provide an update um, on our status of the EMS project, or what's referred to as the bug. Uh, both John and Wayne are here if there's any specific questions, but uh, in the past, what we have is the we had a draft agreement that has been actually finalized today in terms of the exact square footages and percentage of requirements. <coughs> what we have, I just included it in front of you. Um, it was also presented at finance. Is this kind of the rough budget of what we have for the project so far? Again, if you recall, we had allocated about eight hundred thousand uh, dollars for the project going forward. If you look, even with our contingency right now, we're approximately about seven thirty-eight. Um, the drawings are, actually, I know we met, I think it was last week, to go over the final drawings for, I guess, the county portion of the building, and those will be ready to go out for bid in January, is my understanding. That, that was a 60% uh, finished product, and sure. we're expecting the full 100%, hopefully, at the end of this week, coming week, um, or shortly thereafter. Yep. So, yeah, so they'll have the 100% drawings, and those will go out for bid uh, in January, with, I'm guessing, those will be back due in February. So I just want to give the full county board an update just so you're aware where the project's at and that it is moving forward. I don't, John, if you want anything else to add or? No. No, I, I don't okay. have anything else um, unless somebody has some questions. Sure. Dave? Just a dumb question. I see 45.86% of building and 21.1%. What's the rest? That doesn't come up to 100%. It's government. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Actually, I got that's Wayne. I, I just know that our portion is the 21 yeah, point. Correct. And the rest of it actually is the balance is okay. there. Yeah, the, ba yep. yeah. the county's portion is the 21. Approximately 20 percent. Okay. So correct. Based on the square footage of the building. Good catch. Thank you. <laughs> Done. Yes, uh, when is uh, the estimated time of completion? Uh, they're hoping to put shovel in the ground early spring or late spring. Uh, hopefully, be done by November. Thank you. Anybody else? Minutes of October 25th, the regular meeting, and November 15th, the budget <coughs> and annual meeting. I'll make a motion to approve those minutes as presented, Mr. Chairman. I will second that, Mr. Chairman. Changes, additions, deletions, comments, grammatical remarks? Yeah, under under public comment, it looks like maybe there's some uh, verbiage missing. On what date? Uh, oh, on the uh, uh, October 25th, the first set. It appears that there's maybe a sentence not finished.
Ano? I recall the comment had to do whether or not we wanted to make any statement as a county about the proposed mine issue that was going on with potential water pollution into Correct. the bay. Sounds good. <laughs> Anything else? So subject to those changes or amended minutes, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. That's just done to David. We don't know. Any business or updates? Resolutions. 2016-73 <clears throat> in the memoriam of Richard Haynes. I'll read it. To the Door County Board of Supervisors, whereas Richard Dick Haynes <coughs> passed away on November 30th, 2016, and whereas Supervisor Haynes was duly elected to the Door County Board of Supervisors in April of 2004, was re-elected in April 2006, 2008, 2010, 2012, 2014, and 2016 for a total of 12 and a half years, and whereas Supervisor Haynes represented District 9 in the City of Sturgeon Bay, consisting of Wards 5, 6, 22, 24, and whereas Supervisor Haynes served on several committees, including <coughs> airport and parks, emergency services, information systems, law enforcement, library board, property, social services, and the Wisconsin Development Fund Loan Review Committee, and whereas Supervisor Haynes served as chairperson of the Information Systems Committee and Wisconsin Development Fund Loan Review Committee, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors assembled in regular session this 27th day of December 2016, extend our sincere sympathy to the family of Richard Haynes with his acknowledgement of his dedication to the citizens of the County of Door. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 2016-74, of truck chassis, dump body, and snow equipment, Highway Department. John. Move, move for approval resolution 2016-74. I'll second that. <coughs> Any discussion? Comments? Any review? We'll go to the voter board. Passed 19 yes, two absent. <laughs> picky, picky, picky. 2016 75, purchase rubber tired loader, Highway Department. John. I'm motion for approval of resolution 2016 75. Second. <laughs> Get out of the action. Open me up. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you gotta do it. <laughs> John. <laughs> Maybe I better explain that. To both of these to some of the new, newer people here. Uh, this is only brought here because it's statutory required to bring it here. This is already in the budget. It's there. This is nothing new. It's been approved. It's just that we're required to bring it here, and this happens every year. Any questions or comments on it? We'll go to the voter board. said. That has passed 19 yes, two absent. Dan, sorry. Uh, I think of technicality is that it really isn't a statutory requirement. It's the rule of this county board 
to have any purchase over $125,000 or $100,000 come here. It's not state statute or anything. I don't Statutory think. Statutory of the county. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> state of the county. That works. <laughs> Whatever. 201676 radio system maintenance contract with Bay Electronics. Dave. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2016 76. I'll second that, Mr. Chairman. How about um, reading it? Read the whole thing. I'm not going to read the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, pretty much this is uh, last year, if you remember, we had decided to do a time and materials contract to get a better feel as far as the maintenance is going to be needed for the equipment and discuss whether or not, determine whether or not we're going to move on with a further contract. The decision here, as you can see, is to go with a five-year contract this year around. I have a question. On the Bay Electronics page. Okay. Um, Second page, technically. Yes, okay. you have um, three different figures there. Is that the annual amount based on each year? Annual. So, 114,000 is the annual amount each year of the three years. Right. Or 111,000 each year of the five years. <coughs> Anybody else? Linda. I think we also had a clarification in our committee meeting that um, on that same page, Mr. Chairman, the category it should be. 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, not 34, not 34 hours, hours a day. day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless we're getting a really good deal. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that equates out to eight years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Anybody else? Don? Yeah, I'd just like to say that uh, the reason the uh, committees involved wanted to have a uh, maintenance contract and a five-year maintenance contract because uh, last year or this year at some point there was uh, the systems were down and uh, uh, we had to make sure that somebody was in the county to actually uh, if something happens that we could get it fixed right away and if you have a time and materials <coughs> the problem with that is that if you had uh, Bay Electronics uh, if you call them, they may not be available. But if you have a maintenance contract, they're available 24-7 in case of emergencies. Could you carry pagers? Anybody else? <laughs> we'll go to the voter board. That has passed, 19 yes, two absence. <laughs> committee appointments. Mr. Chairman. I'll make a motion to approve uh, resolution number 2016-77. I'll second it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Sure, I'll just do a brief explanation for you. So again, if you look at our, I guess, our term dates, there's a number of committees that are, obviously, individuals are finishing up with their terms. If you look at the memorandum, it actually shows which ones we're doing appointments. In most of these cases, we have individuals that are, again, willing to continue on with their terms. Um, and you can see the different ones. We have the Board of Health, Human Services Board. For the Housing Authority, uh, this one thing we wanted to point out is we're trying to, if you look at the notes after that, we're trying to get the, uh, the dates staggered in terms of when people are coming off so we don't have to use all the institutional knowledge all at once. So you can see that those are actually staggered in terms of how we're doing the appointments. And then you can see uh, the Veterans and then the Highway Safety Commission. Any questions? Take it. We're still working on property. Yeah. I mean, uh, property at airport and parks. To answer that, until we replace the supervisor, we won't make any changes in any potential committees. Huh? Gotcha. 
because it affects a number of committees. Yep. <coughs> Get it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Ordinances. Door County Shoreland Zoning Ordinance. Mr. Fisher. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we accept the report on the Door County Shoreland Zoning Ordinance. Second. <coughs> what would you like to explain to us about it? I would like to explain or, or, or plead that we just passed this <laughs> and go right to the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance, and then I will ask Mariah to come up here and explain <laughs> what we don't understand. <laughs> I'll accept that plea. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> and with that being said, Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion we, ex we accept uh, or, or adopt the 2016-16 ordinance, Door County Shoreland Zoning Ordinance. Second. This is tricky because we were told, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the state did this in the, the budget cycle. And we have to come up with our own ordinance, but it has to mirror theirs. And I kept asking, well, if we have to mirror theirs, why are we doing this? And as best as I can understand Grant's take on it, well, the counties just have to do their own, even if it is a mirror of the state's proposal, because that's what the state wants. Now, am I real far off on that? <clears throat> no. I mean. Okay. <laughs> it's a long story short. The state uh, enacted significant changes in the Shoreland <coughs> zoning uh, statute as part of the last uh, budget bill. And the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources adopted a model ordinance that they would like counties to adopt. Uh, Mariah and I, I think it's safe to say, went through the statute, went through the administrative code, and drafted a an ordinance that we thought fit Door County's needs, yet also fit within the... Uh, requirements uh, of the uh, statutory change. Uh, we've gone back and forth with the DNR two, three, or four times, and I think we've, knocking on wood, have reached a consensus that uh, the ordinance that is before you, if it is enacted, uh, will likely be certified by the DNR, which is the last step. And we have to have this enacted or passed by us prior to the end of the year? It should have been October 1st. We are not the only ones, though. There are numerous counties that have not uh, yet even turn, turned an ordinance into the DNR. So. Kathy? No, originally we had adopted this, correct? And this is to amend it to right with the different changes? We, we had, as Grant said, he and I drafted and went through with the Resource Planning Committee an ordinance that the Resource Planning Committee and then you adopted in September. We didn't get the comments from the Department of Natural Resources on that ordinance until literally the day of the hearing, and so we didn't address them until afterward. We did send them a new draft that we thought complied with what they wanted, and those are the changes that are shown in red font without any yellow highlighting in the draft that's before you. Um, and so the Resource Planning Committee sponsored those changes for public hearing. That hearing was on November 17th, and we didn't get comments from the Department of Natural Resources on those proposed amendments until after the hearing. So that's why you've got all this stuff that's in yellow highlighted on here. Those are things that have been added since the Resource Planning Committee meeting in November. Um, everything, I'm not gonna go through this, but everything that's in yellow, basically what Grant and I had done was reference the statute or the administrative code section that related to whatever the topic was. They wanted it all in there. So we've basically regurgitated a lot of what's already in the code or the statute is kind of saying. Um, they didn't like that we were just referencing the, the codes and the statute. So that's everything that's in yellow is basically regurgitating something that's somewhere else at the state level. And as Grant said, we think that we've now addressed everything that they want us to. So hopefully they'll be able to certify us and 
you won't see us again unless they do some more changes to legislation. <laughs> and, and to Ken's point, life would have been a lot easier if we had just adopted the uh, DNR's model ordinance, lock, stock, and barrel, but we didn't think it was in the county's interest to do so, so we drafted our own ordinance and we're cautiously optimistic it'll be certified this time. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Linda. I have um, two questions or requests for clarifications, I guess. I'll refer to the page. So on page 32, <coughs> down near the bottom, section 3, um, <coughs> paragraph A, the second paragraph, when a discrepancy exists between what the department, as in the DNR, determines a wetland and what the county determines a wetland, um, perhaps Ms. Good could clarify. It says that the department shall make a determination and then the county shall have the authority to grant or deny that determination. So I guess my question would be, if the DNR determines that it is not a wetland, can the county determine that, yes, it is a wetland, and what recourse would the property owner have then? There's a couple if of different... there's a discrepancy between what the DNR determines and the county determines. Right. There's a couple different things going on in that paragraph. The Department of Natural Resources doesn't actually, most of the time, go out to somebody's property and determine whether or not it's a wetland. What they do is they, using soils maps and air photos, they create digital maps that they give to counties and say, these are what we think are the wetland areas in your county. And that's what they've been doing. That's how it's worked for years. We have our staff go out into the field and actually say, okay, yep, that, that line, that's where the line is, or no, it's actually 50 feet over here in one direction or the other. So that's what that is referring to. So say you, for instance, applied to the planning department to build a house, mm -hmm. and the map shows that the wetland you know, splits your property in half, and we go out there and find that, no, actually only a quarter of your property is wetland and where you want to put the house is not, we can go ahead and grant or deny the permit based on the actual field conditions of where the wetland is. So that, that's mostly what that paragraph is referring to. If somebody doesn't agree with where our staff says the wetland boundary is located, mm -hmm. they can either call the Department of Natural Resources and have somebody come out to the property. That's now a much more difficult process than it used to be, and it's not free anymore. You have to pay I think it's a minimum of $300, depending on how big the lot is. Um, and then the Department of Natural Resources will go out, and they don't even really mark the boundary. They just kind of walk it with you, I guess. Um, or the property owner could hire a wetland delineator, and then both we and the Department of Natural Resources would look at that actual marked line in the field. We have a pretty good track record <coughs> with um, our staff being on target as far as where those boundaries are. And then my second question is on page 41. Under number seven, um, paragraph, um, under paragraph number seven on page 41B, it said, um, after this ordinance is enacted, enacted, the continuance of a temporary structure will be discontinued. Could you give me a sample of a tempor temporary structure that would be allowed now, but will not be allowed after this ordinance is, is um, enacted? But are you talking about 7B? 7B and I think maybe C as well. That, or am I reading, misreading that? There's actually, well, and this is, as Grant said, they want us to match the code. And they in the code, they mix up uses and structures. But so this is... 7B is talking about um, the non-conforming use of a temporary structure. We don't actually have anything that qualifies as a temporary structure under the county zoning ordinance. Anything that's going to be in place for more than 10 days is supposed to get a permit. So that doesn't even actually really apply to us most of the time. Um, and the 7C relates to a non-conforming use in any structure that if you stop using your principal structure or your accessory structure with whatever your non-conforming use is, once that use is 
has stopped, then you can't reinstate it. You can only put something back in that building that would be allowed under the current zoning. So those B and C refer to slightly different things. Okay. I was just thinking that if a property owner said, oh, well, I have this temporary structure and I've been using it for this purpose, then now after enacting this, we can't use it. But like you said, that probably will not come into play, into play ever. With our ordinance, no. I mean, I, I suppose that in the towns that are going to only have this ordinance in effect, maybe there will be situations that we'll have to look at on a case-by-case -case basis. But in the, any of the towns that are under comprehensive zoning <laughs> also, um, there really isn't any such thing as a non-conforming use of a temporary structure because if whatever it is that's going on is temporary, that by our ordinance's definition means that it's less than 10 days. And then it's not non-conforming. You just get to do it for 10 days. So it, it won't really change anything in the zone towns. Thank you. Any other questions? Anything else you care to add, Mariah? No. <laughs> okay. We'll go to the voter board on this one. <clears throat> That's passed 18 yes, one no, two absent. Special reports. New business, election of civil service commissioner. Sure, so for this one it's a little bit different because it's a civil service. Um, so I actually don't <coughs> formally do the appointment. Uh, Bill Bray is actually an individual that's on the civil service and he's willing to continue his uh, position on that, but it needs to be done by the county board chair and confirmation of the county board so we our grant would like to confirm yeah it's uh, the agenda is a uh, remnant of the past when the uh, civil service commission was initially appointed uh, the statute uh, requires uh, an election because uh, of the people persons first appointed it goes back to the prior resolution you have staggered terms so everybody doesn't go off civil service commission and uh, and looking at the code, Ken had a question right before the uh, meeting today. Our, it's Chapter 4 of the Sheriff's Department, 4.01 Civil Service Commission. It looks to me like it probably hasn't been updated since 1999. So uh, it would be perfectly fine for the county board to forgo an election, simply confirm the appointment, which is the county board chairperson's appointment. Okay. You could have an election, too. That's perfectly fine. It's fine. I think a simple <laughs> confirmation of the uh, proposed appointment is fine. Okay. How about if we go with the, the uh, confirmation? Confirmation of the appointment. So I'll I will make, appoint that individual. I'll make a motion that we approve the confirmation. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Any oral committee reports? Review committee minutes by anyone. Mr. Chairman. Don. Can we go back uh, to that uh, civil service um, commissioner? How long uh, of appointment is that for? I believe it. They, they should also, the, the appointment should all be five years. When they initially started, uh, they had staggered appointments of one year, two years, three years, and four years and five years. So. Should be the five years. Should be the five, five years. years. Correct. Uh, would you want that in the motion? It wouldn't hurt, but uh, it, it should be understood that all these appointments are for five years. I haven't, honest, I haven't honestly looked at to make sure they're still staggered because over time they, there tends to be a creep, but uh, it's five years by, by statute. So. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. <clears throat> Announcements? Next week, your board meeting is Tuesday, January 24th at 10 a.m. Hope everybody has a happy new year. Mr. Fisher, I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, John, motion wait, to sorry, adjourn. Sorry, sorry, okay. sorry, right, sorry. John? Mr. Chairman, I would like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Christmas and a happy new year. And with Thank that, I, if wait, there's no sorry, further... Wait, sorry, there is. Biz. <coughs> there's no... 
further business, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> well done. I'll second that, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, no, no, I want to second that. I want to. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> <Both>. <laughs>